right, so today we're going to go and we're going to explore down in this canyon. As you can see, there's extensive mining up in this area here. And uh, a lot of uh, material is washed down into this canyon. So we'll be hiking this old road. And you can see it right here. And there's an old bridge down on the far end. And we'll see what kind of things we can find along the way. This is a mountain dandelion. And, and he's telling me that the roots can actually be used to uh, produce a coffee drink. I think that's uh, incredible. Yep, you dry the roots out and uh, roast them just like coffee beans and they work exactly the same. Cool. So we're just starting out and we're looking at some of the geology. Somebody's been picking at this. This almost looks like a Lemonite variant. You got quartz running through it. Someone was picking at it. And then we have this initial deposit up here. It looks like ancient mudstone, maybe an old riverbed or, or some body of water and then uplifted. But this, you can see it right here and it's just in a, in a limited zone. Interesting stuff. Well, just take a look at the scenery. It's beautiful. That's probably a water storage tank for the uh, city of Superior. It's downhill into town. It's located perfectly well. So anyways, we suspected this from a distance. And yeah, they got an old school tunnel up here. This is really neat. Of course, there's always some required graffiti. God, straight in the solid rock. Oh, this is just bizarre. I know, and the wind is blowing through here. Here's a drain pipe, it looks like. Some kind of drainage. Oh, yeah. There's some chains hanging. From the top there, you can see. Water coming in from here. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. And in here, you can see actual drill holes. And now to the east of the tunnel, <clears throat> the road continues and it very likely linked as there's a tunnel that we've just uh, gone through on the other side. And so it's just old road, new road, change up. Again, along the trail, always something new. Oh, wow. Looks like it's really stacked up in there. All right, so we're down here at Queen Creek, and I'm gonna go a little further down, but then I'm gonna wanna hike in the creek, and I'm going to take some samples from any exposed bedrock layers to see if anything, especially if they're crevicey and, and somewhat brittle. And then we're down here, we've walked down to where the tank is, and the tunnel is up here. You can't see it from here, but um, it gives you your bearings on where you'd be going if you took this hike. So here we go, we found the placard. It explains a lot. The first tunnel we went into, there it is. Original Claypool Tunnel, 1945. And then we have the opening day of the Queen Creek Tunnel, 1952. Very interesting. We'll have to look for this too. Just past the water tank on the right side of the road are carved numbers believed to be ID of some of the inmates who worked on the road. That's very cool. 1903. So we're right here and we're just marveling at the supports on this bridge and just the construction. It's, it's really magnificent. We have a lot to uh, thank our forebearers for. So as you walk, keep your eyes open. Some of this is uh, crystallized pretty well, you know, just on the side of the road here. Especially when you've got this kind of, uh, just a, um, a bunch of broken up rock material, you don't know what the the inners of some of these stones are going to reveal to you. So we come across this placard and it gives us an overview of the mineralization here in this zone. And a lot of it I was pretty well aware of because we've seen this Devonian and Mississippian age basically gray mudstone. Um, you see it up on the rim and it's full of mollusk and crinoids and different types of shells. This is really interesting. We're looking at, okay, there's a dam, a, uh, a mine there in the hillside. It's been uh, cordoned off. 
And we have what, I don't know, they could have had a dam here. And in here it looks like they have some kind of ore chute. And there's, there's ore still in it, and it's probably just over the years, you know, kind of rolled down the hill. But another prospect up above it. So we're not sure exactly what we're seeing here. We could probably look it up and really look into it, but it's neat. And then over here, if you look across the road, we're seeing a lot of, uh, well, up there it looks like we've got a, an old foundation that's crumbled. We've got these rock walls, which I personally think are, are always cool to look at. And of course, we know what this place is uh, well known for. There it is. The oxidation process bringing out that that pretty blue color so many small pebbles okay I'm just gonna show you briefly where I'm working from we have this just tearing through here I mean all kinds of material can be caught up in here bouncing down and I'm going to remove this this is the very base and it looks like this guy's gonna come out I use my uh, little West Wing uh, pry bar. Great tool. Got it as a Christmas present last year. Very nice. And uh, I'm going to get the material under in the crevices. And I think it's one of the better samples I can take. Although, there are there's quite a few here. Okay, this is what I found under that rock that I removed. Very rusty in the bag. I'm just working out. I love this damn tool here. It is for this kind of tight spot It really comes in handy And it's a bliss tech. I've shown it on another video Perhaps that's Bly's tech But uh, yeah, it is Bly's tech, but I love it We've been doing it a little at a time and uh, Mark and I pounded on this sucker and Mark finally pried it loose and now we've got access to all this material that's been here for quite a time. Always something new to look at. We saw these signs. And then we've got this shaft right here. Wow. Well, we're on our way back. And there's that one piece of signage where it said that some of the inmates had carved their names in stone. And uh, there it is. You can you can see the 1903. Barely. This this guy's really been worn. All right. Well, it looks like they're doing some road construction here. Next time we go up in these mountains here, and we uh, I know there's a bunch of mining ruins up there. It was a great trip. You can do it with the family. Take it easy. Bring a lunch and have fun. All right. So I've returned home and I've got the, the sample. Now those rocks were fused together and uh, we cleared it. We're at a low spot in the creek and it was a bedrock zone. So these, this bag held transfer dropper pipettes. Fine micro, capacity five mils. <laughs> but anyways, here's the sample. It's not huge, but I've got to say it came from what I think is a killer zone um, fused rock we were able to break it up and find this material beneath it um, I'm gonna start going east now uh, not always but I'm gonna start really looking around there because I've I've talked to some people and heard a few things and uh, I just think there's good potential out there and not so many people go in that direction as well so okay um, I'm using this pan it's the uh, gold claw my kids got it for me uh, last Christmas, and uh, I really like it because I, I messed around with some of that Colorado gold, and it's uh, extremely fine. And this this guy, it's got so many different types of rid, you know riffles in it, and it gives you so many options as you're you know panning things down. No gold, just some. There's some pyrite entities, and uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I had high hopes. I loved the sample, I thought it was just an ideal spot. 
if you don't find gold <clears throat> is not a failure and uh, yeah definitely not for me it's just how it is it's called prospecting and you're not always gonna find anything but when you do you know it's super exciting and it's worth it and anyways the trip was worth it regardless you know I mean I just really it was a great hike it was super fun and uh, really nice and the other thing this unit you can use it in so many different ways um, I panned some of those finds and, and in my last step I would kind of rock it back and forth there's super fine riffles in here and uh, what it'll do, you can push this thing and remove all the black sand, that really fine, tiny um, gold will, you know, hold in those tiny, tiny riffles. It's really a nice unit. So I recommend this for uh, doing some of your cleanups and uh, and bringing out on, you know, little exploratories. Cause and, I, and I don't see it here. So, what I would say, the trip's not a failure. It was fun. It's an area where there's mines on all the hillsides surrounding. And uh, to me, it was a success because it was a great freaking day. It was super fun. The tunnel was killer. And, uh, you know, we did find some interesting, you know, rocks. And... Uh, but you don't always find gold. So 